Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this uh, January lesson on phrasal verbs part two. Hope you're ready to learn some new phrasal verbs and maybe review some that you already know. Just want to make sure that the uh, equipment is all working properly here. We'll start in about 30 seconds. You can see the timer up there. I think I did everything correctly. We'll see in a moment. Again, starting in 20 seconds. Uh, I wish I had set my other camera up. It's a beautiful snowy day with snow coming down, but uh, but it's not a snow day. <laughs> I do have to go to work in about an hour and a half. So, anyways, we'll start in seven seconds. Everything seems to be working. Well, that's the wrong slide. <laughs> there we go. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about phrasal verbs part two. If you were here last week, uh, I did a lesson called phrasal verbs part one where we looked at about 25 or 26 phrasal verbs that are common in the English language. This week, we'll be looking at phrasal verbs part two. I have another set of about 25, maybe 26 phrasal verbs to uh, to talk about uh, and I think you will enjoy this. It will be a bit of review for some of you but it will also be uh, a time to learn some new phrasal verbs. And again, if you don't know what phrasal verbs are, it's when we take a verb and then we take another word and then when we put the verb and the other word together, it makes a verb with a new meaning. So, it can be a little bit confusing for English learners but I hope that I can clarify a few things for you this morning and help you um, understand phrasal verbs a bit better. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about phrasal verbs part two. Hey, a few things before we get started. One, I wanna make sure everything is working. Let me do that. Yes, there we go. Hi to Modags, Freddie Wolf, Fabian, Jing, Fabi, Rania, Jing, Mahir, Nelly, Nelly, Lolly, Lolly. Oh, double names are popular right now. Wanda, uh, let's see here. Key Park, I said Freddie Wolf already but hi again. Van, Ali Baruch. Um, let me scroll back. Wanda Prado. Oh, Eugene's here. Automation Secure Home is here. Uh, Mode Eggs is here. Mode says, hey, hey, I was watching the short video on the other channel and it got me warmed up to learn English. I uh, yes, I shot that one a few days ago. I think I shot that on Wednesday. Uh, it was chilly. You could tell by how I was talking that when I would breathe in, the air was very, very cold. But hey, hi to Ralph and Luana and Nuris and Chinchu and Jeff Chang and Ricardo Ramos as well. Good to see all of you. Remember, this is an English lesson where uh, you get to learn some things but you can also ask me questions. If you notice, Nightbot will ev- uh, eventually share a link. My chat's over there. We'll share a link to a form you can fill out if you have a question. If not, the link is in the description below and I'll pause three times throughout the lesson to answer some questions. Um, I was gonna say something else. Use the chat to have fun English conversations with each other. Uh, please enjoy each other's company while you listen to me uh, drone on and on about, <laughs> about phrasal verbs. And I will be taking a lot of sips of water during this lesson because uh, we had an event at school last night. So, I talked a lot uh, and uh, uh, my throat, it's not sore but you know when you talk a lot, you feel like, well, I used my voice too much. So, I'll probably be taking a lot of sips. Um, let me see here. Got to get the exclamation mark at the beginning, I think, mode. There you go. I think that will pop up the form and hi to Paco San as well. Okay, um, should we get started? I think we should. Let me uh, refresh the camera so it runs the whole time and uh, let's get started. To wake up and to get up. So, these are two of the first phrasal verbs you'll probably learn in English and they have slightly different meanings for me. For me, when I think about it, when I wake up in the morning, it's when I go from sleeping to being awake. Like the moment I stop sleeping and I open my eyes, that is when I wake up. That is how I define it and most people define it that way as well. But get up is the activity of going from being in bed to either sitting or standing, okay? So, get this. I can set my alarm and I can wake up at seven but sometimes I don't get up until seven ten. So, at seven o'clock, the alarm goes off. Actually, it went off at six forty-five this morning. 
So, at 6.45, I woke up, past tense, but I didn't get up until seven o'clock. That's when I sat up and eventually stood up uh, and got dressed and started my day. So, to wake up when you go from sleeping to being awake, to get up when you actually physically get out of the bed. To bundle up. So, this is a picture from the other day and this might be a somewhat uh weather related phrasal verb. Uh when I go outside on a day like this, right now it's minus nine and snowing, I will bundle up. I will wear a t-shirt. I will wear a long sleeve shirt. I will wear a hoodie or sweater. I will wear a winter coat, a toque or winter hat, gloves and then I had my uh balaclava on as well on my face. So, when it's really really cold, you want to bundle up before you go outside. When I was a kid, my mum would bundle us up before we went outside to play. So, she would put on our hats and mitts and toques and winter boots and send us outside. By the way, toque is a Canadian word for winter hat. So, you can just use winter hat um, if you're not in Canada to describe it. To get over. So, this is the verb um the definition I'm going to give you, there's there's a few but the definition I'm going to give you is to eventually be happy after a sad event or to eventually not be stressed about something anymore. So, it works this way. Um let's say someone was dating someone else and they broke up. They're no longer together. It eventually that person will get over it, okay? So, eventually they will be happy again. Um let's say that someone in your family passed away. Someone died and it's very very sad for weeks or months or years but eventually not totally but eventually you get over it a little bit. You do return to living your life as normal. So, when you get over something, it means something in your past that wasn't a happy thing happened and you're now no longer thinking about it a lot or stressed about it. So, you get over it. That's a hard one. That was that's a pretty advanced phrasal verb. Hopefully, you understood my explanation. To back up. Now, this has a couple of meanings. Um so, one meaning is a newer meaning. It means to put your information on an external hard drive or onto a thumb drive or onto um a USB stick. So, maybe you have a lot of files on your computer and you wanna make sure that you don't lose those files. You might want to back up the files onto in the far picture, you'll see um uh the uh hard drive. Now, I'm smiling because Jen's taking the kids to school and she's about to back up the van and I and I don't have a way to show you. So, everyone's getting in the van right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh in a moment, she's going to back up. So, when you are in a vehicle, and you put the vehicle into reverse, you then back up. So, you can back up out of your driveway. You can back up out of a parking spot. You can also back out of a parking spot. Sorry to confuse you. But to back up means to protect your data and your files uh, by creating a second copy or it can mean to drive uh the video or sorry, it can mean to drive a vehicle in reverse. So, just a quick answer here. Uh Catherine Wilson says, is this recorded video? No, this is live Catherine. I see your comment. Welcome. Good to have you here. I'm gonna get back to the lesson now after I cough just a bit. <coughs> Not sure why I'm coughing. Here we go. To call around. So, sometimes, here's here's a good example. Let's say I went out for the evening and when I came home, I didn't have my wallet. I would probably call around to all my friends, the people who I went out with to see if one of them found it. Um let's say I didn't know where my brother was. I might call around. I might call his house, then I might call my sister's house. I might call my brother's house because I want to figure out where he is. So, when you call around, it means to make a whole bunch of phone calls because you're looking for something or someone or you're just looking for some information. So, um Trying to think of another example. Um oh, sometimes our power goes out. We have no electricity and then I call around to see if the neighbors are having the same problem. So, I'll call my one neighbor and then my other neighbor and then my other neighbor 
to see if they are also experiencing a power outage. So, to call around means to call several people in a row uh, to find something out. To check out. Now, this uh, has a couple of meanings. I'm gonna cover the one that's a little more scandalous. Um, it can mean to leave a hotel. When you're done staying at a hotel, you can check out uh, from the hotel. Um, it also can mean like when you buy something online, eventually you uh, you click, uh, you do the checkout. That's more of the noun, right? You, you do the checkout. So, ignore that one. But it could also mean when you look at someone because they are attractive. So, in this picture, this is a classic internet picture. A guy is walking with his girlfriend but another girl has walked by and he has turned to check her out. So, yes, very scandalous. He is looking at her because he thinks she is very attractive. So, when you check someone out, it means that you see someone that you think is very attractive and you kind of look. You take a look at them. I'm not gonna go into too many more details but sometimes when you are in public, um, you might be walking along and you might see someone who's very attractive and you might check them out. So, several meanings but that's the one I wanted to focus on in this lesson. Hey, let's uh, let's do some co- uh, questions. Let's do that for a second. Just one moment. I'm going to go off camera for a moment. What am I doing? You might be wondering. Well, I was just using these and you can guess what I was doing. This is my Santa Claus box of tissues. For some reason, my nose was running. You know, I'm tired of talking about being sick. So, I'm not gonna talk about whether I'm sick or not. So, let's look at a few questions though. Um, First one from Andrew. Hi, Bob. No questions for you this time. I just wanted to say thank you for the private video you made for my wife. No problem, Andrew. That was fun. Uh, she's going to watch it every day. Thank you. Um, so, Andrew ordered a video and I made it a couple days ago for him and his wife. Uh, particularly for his wife to encourage her because she was going to be taking an English test soon. So, uh, no problem, Andrew. Uh, you are very welcome. It was fun to make. Thanks for ordering that. Um, let's see here. From Hung from Vietnam. I screwed up my room after digging around to find my ID card. Can I use mess up instead of screw up in that? Can you explain the situation where I should use each of them? Yes. So, I will talk about screw up in a bit but you would probably say you messed up your room or you would more likely say after looking for my ID card, my room is a mess. So, you wouldn't even really use a phrasal verb but definitely you messed up your room. Screw up is used more for mistakes. So, um you could say, oh, I screwed up. I lost my ID card. So, you made a mistake. I'll explain a bit more when I get to that slide but I would definitely say um, messed up. You messed up your room. Um Freddie Wolf says his girlfriend should break up with this mad guy. Yeah. So, in the picture of the person checking the other girl out, I agree. She should dump him. Um and then Teo says, hi, Bob. Thank you for your video. No question. Please take care of yourself. I will. Thank you for that. Uh let's see here. Um from Fabian. Dear teacher Bob, thank you for this amazing lesson. Could you please explain the phrasal verbs freak out and put away? Thanks again. Greetings from Colombia. So, freak out can mean to have an emotional reaction to something. If Jen was to scare me at night, if I was walking at night, I might freak out. I might go ah and then run away. It can also be used to describe like incredible joy. If I Let's see here. If someone gave me tickets to see a Taylor Swift concert, I might freak out. I might be like, ah, I can't believe it. Taylor Swift tickets. That, sorry, I wouldn't actually say that but you can freak out in a negative or positive way and it means like a lot of emotion about something. And then to put away, the simplest thing would be when I get home from buying groceries, I put them away. So, I can split the phrasal verb. I put away the groceries or I put uh, them away or I put the groceries away. You can say it that way too. So, it means to put things in a cupboard, right? To to store things. Um let's see here. Um in the chat, Anna said it was fun that I read the vlog for this week. Very cool. Yes, that was nice. Um and then let me see here. I think I'm out of questions, people. So, if you have questions, please ask them. I am going to continue with the lesson. Maybe this lesson will go quicker than normal. So, anyways, there is a form. Let me put a link to the form in the chat for you 
And if you want to use that, I will do my best to answer those questions. Okay, everything's working well, including me. <laughs> um, where are we at? To come down with. Now, this is <laughs> this is a timely slide. Um, I woke up this morning and I felt great but then you noticed I had to blow my nose. My nose was starting to run and if you listen a bit, you can hear that I feel like I talked a lot last night but I might also be coming down with something. In English, when you say that you are coming down with something or when you say I'm going to come down with something, I think it means you're getting sick. You're in the very early stages of sickness. Um but it can also describe being sick. Like I could call my boss and say, I think I I've come down with a cold. I can't come to work today. Okay. So, to come down with, <laughs> you get a lot of extra words in this phrasal verb means to uh to get sick, to be sick. It's not nice to come down with something when you have something important to do. My least favorite time to be sick is the day I have to do a live lesson. It's not nice to come down with something on the day of a live lesson. To count on. When you can count on someone, it means they are reliable. My younger brother is awesome. All my brothers and sisters are awesome but my younger brother is awesome because I can count on him to help me if I need help with something. I have a good friend as well that I can count on. If I needed a ride to the airport, I can count on him. He'll do it for me. So, to count on someone means if you ask them to do something, they almost always say yes. If you need help, they give you help. If you um yeah, if you I was gonna say if you need money, they'll give you money but I don't borrow money from people but when you can count on someone, it means they rarely say no when you ask them for something. So, for my brother and my friend, if I ask them for a ride, if I ask them for help, if I ask them to help build something, I can count on them. They almost always say yes. It's good to have uh siblings and friends that will do that. To get ahead. So, there's a phrase in English, you know, everyone wants to get ahead. To get ahead means to be successful. To get ahead in life means to have money to buy a house and to buy a car. It doesn't necessarily mean to be rich but it does mean that you are doing okay financially. So, a lot of people like to get ahead. When you get ahead, you have extra money at the end of the month. After you pay all your bills, you have extra money to do fun things. So, one of the biggest goals in life for people is they want to get ahead. They want to be successful. They want to have enough money uh, to live well. It again, it doesn't necessarily mean rich. Like you could say, um, you know, he came from a poor family but he's he's working at two jobs to get ahead. Um basically saying he wants to make more money than he needs to buy groceries and pay rent. He wants to have a little bit more so he can have fun. He's just trying to get ahead in life. To go along. So, I should have added the word with but you can use just go along as well. It means to agree to something. So, let's say um it, it has other meanings as well. A lot of these do but in this case, it means that you're going to do what the person is asking you to do. A good example would be let's say Jen said um she wanted to quit flower farming. I could say, yeah, I can go along with that and that means I support her in that decision and I am happy and will help her quit flower farming. She's not quitting by the way. She's waiting for nice weather to come so we can start another season. Um so, when you go along with someone, it means you agree with them. You're saying yes, et cetera, et cetera. It can mean to go with someone. Like Jen went to town and my kids went along with her or I could go along with Jen to town to go to the donut shop. But in this case, it also means to agree with someone or to do what they are asking you to do. Sometimes your boss asks you to do something new and you just go along with it. Um, maybe you're not excited to do it but you do it anyways. You just agree and you do it. You go along with it. This was the second harder one. I hope that was a good explanation. To look after. So, parents look after kids. When parents get old, kids look after their parents. 
when you look after someone, it means you care for them. Jen and I look after our kids. We make sure we buy them clothes when they need new clothes. We feed them. We buy groceries. We do everything that parents are supposed to do because we want to look after our children. So, it means to care for someone. It means to um you can also say to take care. It means the same thing. When you look after your kids, you could say that you're taking care of your kids. Um so, that's another way to say it. Um and it is kind of how life works, right? Like our parents take care of us. Our parents look after us. Sorry, I switched verbs there. Um when I was little, my mom looked after me and now I look after my mom a little bit. I stop in. I help her with her finances. Uh, I help to make sure that she has um everything in order and that she's taken care of. So, when you look after someone, you care for them. You might hear someone say this like um my my parents moved in with me because I need to look after them. So, maybe they're not capable of making food well anymore. Maybe they're not capable of even dressing themselves or taking care of themselves. You might have to look after your elderly parent to put up with. So, I put this one in because this is a challenging one to explain. Sometimes people behave in a certain way and you can't change that behavior. You just have to put up with it. So, the best example I can think of would involve students or children. Sometimes kids behave in a way and if you see the mom in the background, kids behave in a way that can drive you crazy but you just have to put up with it. Sometimes you can ask them to stop but I would say this, if my kids were enjoying themselves and running around and laughing and having fun, and they were being really loud. I just put up with it. I don't tell them to stop because I know they're having fun. Now, if they were throwing stuff at each other, I would stop what they're doing. Um same with students. Sometimes I have students work with other students and the classroom gets loud because the students are all talking to each other. They're not misbehaving. They're talking to each other because they have to communicate to do the work. But it's too loud for me but I just put up with it. So, when you put up with uh someone or something, it means to tolerate it. It means to allow it to happen even though maybe you don't like it. You need to put up with it. To see to. So, this simply means to do. So, when Jen and I decide to we decided to paint the back room in our in our house, Jen said she was gonna see to the painting and I said I would see to putting new lights in the ceiling. So, it simply means you're going to be the one that does it. At work, sometimes we plan things as a group of teachers and one person might see to sending out invitations. The other person might see to the decorations. Another person might see to the food and it simply means you are going to do that task. You're going to see to it. It means you're going to do it and you're going to get it done. To think over. So, this means to think. I don't know why we had to add the word over but it does definitely get used. Like, I'm going to think it over. Can you, let me see, what would be a good question? Um can you do a live stream every day next week? And I might say, well, I'll think it over. That means that I don't have an answer right now. I kind of like the idea but I don't like the idea. I need to think it over. Again, I'm splitting this phrasal verb and putting it in the middle. It means that for the rest of the day, I'll think about it. There's another one by the way. To think about, to think over. So, I'll think it over throughout the day. When I'm driving, I'll think about it. When I'm at school, I'll think it over for a bit. It means to take some time to think about something before you make a decision. Um that's Sorry, I lost train of thought there because I read a comment but to think something over, to think about something for a while before you make a decision. To turn down. When someone turns you down, it means they're saying no. Um it means maybe you applied to immigrate to Canada and then you got a letter saying no. It means you were turned down in the past tense. It's not nice when you are turned down. It's not a nice feeling. Maybe you and five other people applied for a job 
and you got it but they turned the other four people down. It means they said no to them. So, it can also mean when the music's really loud, you can turn down the music but when you turn something down or you turn someone down, it can also mean that you're saying no to them. So, if a student said to me, instead of writing my exam, um could I write a paper instead? I would turn them down. I would say, no, you have to write your exam. I would say no to them. Big no. To set up. So, whenever I go outside, I have to set up my tripod. When I get ready to do these live lessons, I need to set up my studio. I need to make sure the light is working and the camera is here. I need to make sure that this camera stays on during the lesson. I need to set up my area here. I have to have my computer and my mouse and everything that I need. So, when you set something up, it means you physically put the things where they need to be. When Jen and I go to market, it's on the street. So, we have to set up our booth. We have to set up our stall at market. We put our tables out and our canopy. By the way, there is a really good English lesson on uh, learning English at the farmer's market. Um just do a search on YouTube. Bob the Canadian, learn English at the market. Then you'll you will find it. But anyways, whenever you have stuff, you need to if you need to take things out of boxes and put them in place, we would say you need to set those things up. Hey, we're gonna switch to questions and members only chat a little bit early today but I think that's okay with everybody. Let me get to the settings here. So, at this point in time, members are allowed to chat or ask questions directly in the chat. I'm going to have a sip of water and then we are going to in 10 minutes get back to the lesson and finish it off. So, don't go anywhere. Um Hadi Hassan says, define throw up please. So, this is an interesting one because you can like if you were standing on a balcony, I could throw a ball up to you. That makes sense, right? I'm throwing and the ball's going up. But it can also mean if your stomach is upset and you vomit, we also say to throw up. Um it wasn't very nice for Jen and I when our kids were little because when they got sick, sometimes they would throw up. It doesn't happen very often anymore but it can mean to become sick, to feel like your stomach feels weird and then you you vomit, you throw up. So, a couple meanings for that one. Uh let's see here from Pavel. Um hello, Bob. Please explain the difference between be back, come back and get back. Thanks. So, uh just let me check something here. Okay. So, I use be back Yeah, I can almost use these all the same way. Like, I'm going on vacation. I'm going to be back in a week. I'm going to come back in a week. I'm going to get back in a week. All of those are equally, they all mean the same thing and they're all equally as common. I'm going to Florida. When are you going to be back? When are you going to come back? When are you going to get back? Now, I'm sure they all have slightly different meanings as well. But for me, that's the most common way to use those. I'm going to work today. I'm going to be back home at four. I'm going to come back home at four. I'm going to get back home at four. I would say also, yep, that's how I would use those. Those are good. I like that. Thank you. Um from Tio. Hey, hi, Bob. The phrase cross your T's and dot your I's is that means double check. Yes, it means to make sure everything is perfect. Um it doesn't actually mean that you're making sure your T's and I's are done properly but uh definitely it does mean that uh you have to double check stuff. When I right now I have to uh give students exams next week. So, yesterday I made my exams and I made sure that I crossed my T's and dotted my I's. It means I actually read over the exam about four or five times because I don't want it to have any mistakes on it. Okay, from the chat, we have Tio saying, hi, Bob. What about overthinking and think over? So, when you overthink something, uh it means you spend too much time thinking about it. So, it's actually a common phrase in the negative to say to someone, don't overthink it. Just make a decision. 
So, if I said to my kids, I'm gonna bring home pizza. What toppings do you want? And if one of my kids was like, well, I kind of like pineapple but I I'm more in the mood for a meat lover's pizza but then maybe a supreme would be better. I might say, hey, don't overthink it. Just tell me quickly what you want. So, that's the difference I think. Um and then to think over means to think about something for a while uh before you make a decision. I just wanna check my slide here. Yeah, I've lost my my slides are too little and I can't find the slide back that I'm looking for. To think over. Yes, to think over. There we go. Uh Mode says, you can also throw your hands up. Like when you give up, you can just throw your hands up or if you're excited, you can throw your hands up in excitement. Maybe your team scores a goal and you throw your hands up and you cheer. And then Mode said a little while back, um what did Mode say? Whoa, Mr. Bob's voice is starting to sound a bit gravelly. And I'm worried about it. Well, thankfully, I only have to talk for about 20 more minutes and I don't have to talk at all today hardly. Um I do have to go to work but it's a pretty low key day. Uh and then I don't have to really talk again till like Sunday maybe. So, I think I will be fine. Um let's see. Lolly says to come down with and be under the weather f- please. What's the difference? They're the same. But usually come down with is started with the word start. Like I'm I think I'm starting to come down with something or we use it in the past to say I came down with something. Yesterday, oh, last week I came down with the flu. Under the weather is a feeling of you know, you don't have a lot of energy and you think you might be getting sick. Like I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. Um let's just say that if I was feeling under the weather, I would probably still go to work but if I was coming down with something, I would probably call in sick. So, under the weather is is an interesting phrase. Like it's vague, right? You're not actually saying what illness you have. Freddie Wolf. Uh every live, Bob counts down each second to go until the lesson will start. Is this phrasal verb correct? A big thank you. J'espère que tu ne couvres pas un room. Yeah, I hope I don't either. Um yeah, to count down. Yeah, I do do a countdown, don't I? So, I used it there as a phrasal verb and as a noun. Did you notice that? I do a countdown. I like to count down before the lesson starts. Uh Harry 300. Thanks, Freddie. That was a good comment. Harry 300. Come back and go back. Thanks. So, I'm gonna come back from work at four and I'm not going to go back to work until Monday. Um he is going to come back from Florida in a few days and he is going to go back to Florida next year. So, there's some example sentences for you, Harry. Hopefully, that helps. Tio says, thank you, Bob. Makes sense. No problem. Uh, Lolly saying hi to Harry. Nice. Lolly says, thanks for your answer, Bob. No problem. Um Harry, what is the word you just said? Low key. Oh. So, if I say, you know, uh I actually have kind of a low key day and I have a very low key weekend. So, I don't have to do a lot of work today. Um I need to go to school. I need to teach my classes but my students are finishing work. I don't have to lecture or talk or anything. I just need to be there and walk around and and help them if they need a little bit of help. So, it's very low key as opposed to if I was teaching a new lesson, that's a little more stressful. Uh and if I say, oh, I just have a low key weekend, it means I'm probably not going anywhere. I'm probably just home and relaxing and taking my time to do whatever I feel like doing. Um Key Park, does under the weather mean under the cold weather? Thanks. No, it doesn't actually relate to weather at all. It just means that you're starting to feel a little bit sick. I'm starting to feel under the weather. From Sophia, hello dear teacher Bob. The phrasal verb come along with me which is from a song means to go with somebody. Thanks a lot. Yes. So, if I was to say, let's say I was in a store uh and I was looking for, let me see. I'm in a grocery store and I'm looking for apples. I could ask someone, where are the apples? And they might describe to me where they are and I might still be confused and they might say, okay, well, come along with me. I'll show you where the apples are. So, it means, yes, walk in the same direction I'm going and then I will show you. So, come along with me. That's a good question by the way. Uh from Unabi and then I'll get back to the chat. Hi, Bob. Thanks for your lessons. 
Which of these two is using is used more naturally to break through phrasal verb or a noun breakthrough? Thanks. Yeah. I think the noun is more common. So, a breakthrough is when you know the when they were trying to create a vaccine for COVID, eventually they had a breakthrough and they knew they had something that worked. Um so, yeah, I would say the noun form is much more common. Yes, for sure. Uh let's see from the chat. From mode, can we use to touch up to mean the same thing as dotting your I's and crossing your T's? Yeah, but it it has a little more of a yeah, definitely. Okay. So, when I'm done my exams, sometimes I just touch them up a little bit before I photocopy them. But to me, touch up is usually used more for visual things. Like, if I painted my van, the day after I painted it, I might go and and do some touch up or I might touch up some spots. Um if you have a painting, you might touch up a few spots. Um so, to me, I it can be used for written stuff or other work but it's often used for visual things. Things like painting. Like when we paint a room, sometimes the next day, Jen will touch up a few spots to make sure they're covered properly. So, it wouldn't be wrong to use it for other stuff but uh I think for me, it's mostly when I'm talking about visual things. Uh let's see here from the form, Vera. Hi, Bob. Thank you for doing live for us. No problem. I would like to ask you about the meaning of the phrase, do yourself a favor. Is it rude to say that? It depends on what you're telling the person to do. If I was talking to someone at work and they were very stressed and starting to get sick, I might say, hey, do yourself a favor. Take a sick day tomorrow. That's very polite. Um if someone walked on my property and I wanted them to leave because they were someone I didn't want, like I was really annoyed, I might say, do yourself a favor and leave because that's more of a threat. So, it depends on the situation. You're basically saying to the person, do this action because it will be good for you. Um I might say to a student, hey, do yourself a favor and study um do yourself a favor and study multiple nights instead of just the night before. That would be a polite way to to use it. Um let's see here. Hello, Bob. I wonder is there a rule for separable and inseparable phrasal verbs? Thank you. I will talk about this a bit in the future. I tend to not mention it unless I'm splitting the verb up myself, you know. Um but often like we just talked about to touch up. So, you can touch it up. Um the back room was just painted. I'm gonna touch it up tomorrow. So, I can split it, right? Um but not all of them are splittable. Like to count on, I don't think is splittable. So, I I don't know the exact rule but I will research that and maybe I'll do a small lesson on how to know when you can and when you can't split them. So, Safin says, hello, teacher Bob. What's the difference between I am a hard worker and my work is hard? <clears throat> yeah, so those are completely different. Okay, they're not completely different. They're both talking about work but if I say I am a hard worker, it means no matter what job you give me, I I work fast, I work well, I do a good job. Like I like when Jen and I work together, we're both very hard workers. We don't sit around when we're working. We work but when you say my work is hard, you're describing your work as being difficult and hard to do. So, I would say at school, I am a hard worker. I work, I I know I'm talking about myself and it sounds a little bit arrogant but I am a hard worker Uh, and I would say my work isn't hard though. I quite enjoy being a teacher. Um I find it very straightforward and easy to do. Uh let's see. Mode says, I think one thing that makes phrasal verbs tricky is that sometimes that little practice makes all the difference and sometimes it's just optional. It's it's just native speakers being jerks like Brent once said. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it is one of those things where I haven't done this for a while but often I apologize for how silly English can be. You know, because take for instance the phrasal verb to think over or to think about. You don't actually need the word over or about. You could just say, okay, I'm gonna think. No, I guess you do kind of do need it. Okay, I take that one back. Um take some time to think. Take some time to think it over. Take some time to think about it. All of those sentences are correct. So, in certain situations, 
you don't need the phrasal verb. Um yeah. So, and I I read it wrong because I don't have glasses mode. Sometimes that little particle makes all the difference. Yes, that's definitely true and sometimes it's just optional. Yes, sometimes let me see of one. Uh let me see. Yeah, sometimes you don't need it. Like I wake at 5 a.m. or I wake up at 5 a.m. The se- they're both correct. The second one is just m- more natural sounding. So, Mode says particle the second part of the phrasal verb. Yeah, sorry I missed that. I should have been wearing these uh when I read your comment but good comment. Um let's see here from Daniel. Let me get it on the screen. Hello, Bob. You are the best teacher. Thank you for your lessons. I follow your lessons for several months. Please explain to me, sir. I'm gonna fix that a bit. Uh, as a polite form of address. Thank you. So, this used to be used a lot and it's not used as much anymore. When students talk to a male teacher, they would often call them sir. They would say, excuse me, sir. Um can I ask you a question about this or about that? Um just a minute. I'm gonna blow my nose off camera for a sec. I'm still here. You can see my shoulder, right? Um but it's not used as much anymore. I still have a few students that call me sir occasionally but it's not as common as it used to be. Okay, let me check here. I'm gonna finish questions later. We're gonna get back to the lesson. Uh by the way, if you're one of the 314 people watching, don't forget to click this red subscribe button. To drop off. So, you can drop things off. You can also drop kids off. You can drop people off. Probably one of the examples you'll first hear with this phrasal verb is when you need to drop someone off at the airport. So, if my brother was flying to Buffalo, he might fly from Toronto to Buffalo. I might need to drop him off at the airport. Maybe he doesn't want to leave his car at the airport. So, it means to bring someone there. Often, parents will drop their kids off at school in the morning and then they will pick their kids up at night. That's the other part to fall behind. If you've ever been in a race or if you've ever been working on a project at work that has a deadline or maybe you're in school, um you can fall behind. There's a certain amount of running you need to do to keep up to someone and if you don't run as fast as the person in front of you, you you will fall behind. Um it's not nice to fall behind. Uh sometimes at work, I try to do a certain amount of work every day So, by the end of the week, I have all my work done but uh sometimes I fall behind. Not very nice. Thanks for the reminder mode. I just went right back into teaching without turning on subscriber mode. There we go. Mode says in the chat, uh hey, Bob, I think you forgot to turn off members only chat. There we go. That's why I love having members who think on their feet and can remind me of things that I have forgotten. To find out and to figure out. Now, this is tricky, okay? This actually, this question has come up in my live Q and A lessons quite a bit. And I'll, I'll tell you this. They can mean the same thing, but generally, when you find something out, it means you receive information about something that you didn't know, okay? So let's say you're working with someone, um, and then I'm trying to think of a situation where um oh, let's say you're working with someone uh and you find out they have five kids or you find out they're married or you find out that they went to school with your sister. It means that you received information that you didn't have before, okay? Um and then to figure out means to think about something until you uh you've determine the solution or you've come up with an answer, okay? Um now, you can flip these a bit, okay? So, that's why I'm saying generally, it means this and generally, it means this Um, because I could say the detective, my car was stolen and the police are going to try and find out who stole it or they're going to try and figure out who stole it but to me, they do have slightly different meanings in terms of what the person is doing. So, for me, if I want to find out which of my kids ate a cookie, it means I'm going to listen to what they're saying until they give me the information. 
If I want to figure out which of my kids stole the cookie, I might look at the evidence to try and figure it out. So, again, they can be used interchangeably. If my van had no gas in it, I need to find out which kid forgot to put it in or I need to figure out which kid forgot to put it in. But generally, when you find out, it means someone has told you something, some new information and when you figure something out, you've used your brain to get that new information. Hopefully, that made sense. Um but you could kind of use them interchangeably. I guess you just need to listen to a lot of example sentences about that to hand out. At school, I often hand out things to my students. I hand out assignments. I hand out papers. I hand out tests. It means if you have stuff, you give some to each person or one to each person. Um sometimes at the store, they hand out coupons at the entrance. They give you a little piece of paper and it gives you a discount. Um sometimes when I go to visit my mom, she will hand out candies to all my kids. So, it means to give people things um that you have in an orderly fashion to kick back. So, I said I was going to have a very low key day today and a very low key weekend. I'm going to kick back this weekend. I don't have a lot of plans this weekend. It's supposed to be nice and snowy and cold. I will go for a walk every day and then for the rest of the day, I'll probably just kick back and relax. So, to kick back means to relax, to enjoy yourself, to do nothing for a little bit. To lay off. So, if you have a job and if your boss comes in and says, when you go home today, you don't need to come back tomorrow. You no longer have a job here. That's to be laid off. So, I just flip to the past tense. Um your boss might lay off people because they don't need them anymore. So, it means to be fired or it means we also use the verb to be let go. So, I could say, hey, does Jim work at the steel factory still? And you could say, no, um he was let go or he was laid off. So, past tense for both of those. So, it means to uh no longer have the job that you have. To look down on. I think last week we looked at to look up to. So, uh I when I was a kid, I looked up to my dad. I looked up to my uncle. I admired them and respected them. But to look down on is the opposite. So, you might go to the gym and maybe you have huge muscles and you're really good at working out. And then in January, a lot of new people join the gym and you might look down on them. You might think you are better than them because you've been going to the gym for so long and they're just new and they're just starting out. So, when you look down on someone, it means you think you're better than they are. It's not a good thing. It's not good for people to look down on other people and to screw up. So, two plus two is not five. (laughs) This person has screwed up. So, this is actually a nicer way. Uh there's a harsher version of this that has the F word in it. I'm not gonna teach you that phrase but this is a softer version of it and this is used in very common English language. So, I could say um let's see um you better cut that piece of wood right or you're going to screw up the whole project or it's also a noun by the way. You can call someone a screw up but that's very rude. That's insulting um but when you screw up, it means you make a mistake Maybe uh on question seven of a test, uh when I'm writing the test, I do question six really well but I look at question seven and think, oh, I'm gonna screw up question seven because I don't know the answer. So, to make a mistake, to do something wrong, to screw up. Hey, that's the end of the slides of the lesson. Let me get to the rest of the questions. I think I have about five left or so. Um let me get those on the screen. Want to know says thank you very, very, very much. You are very welcome. Um let's see here. Unsel, hi. Phrasal verbs can sometimes be confusing for new learners. Does this also apply to students whose native language is English at primary school or other levels? Thanks. So, here's the funny thing about phrasal verbs. Until I started teaching English, I didn't even know they really existed. They are so natural and so easy to use for native speakers. So, when I started to realize that we had something called phrasal verbs seven years ago and how difficult they are for English learners, uh, I was kind of surprised because to me, 
I think we learn the phrasal verb not as separate words but as a whole. So, to me, the verb to get up is one verb. It's not three words to me or two words. Um it's just one word that means to get out of bed. And so, for English learners, we don't even realize that they're different from normal verbs, okay? Um so, yeah, it's kind of funny but that's the way it is. Like, my kids all use phrasal verbs. They don't even know what they are. We don't teach them in school. Um because if you know how to conjugate the verb part of the phrasal verb, you're fine. Shad, hi, Bob. Thank you for this lesson. My question is, what is the difference between as long as and as soon as? Um well, I'm going to do these live lessons as long as I can. So, that means going into the future, I'm going to do them every Friday. Um if Jen says, Bob, can you uh help me with something in the kitchen? I may I might say, um I'll help you as soon as I can which means I have to finish what I'm doing before I can come and help you. Slightly different uh meaning there. Um from Hafia, it seems you're feeling under the weather. Keep warm and bundle up. Drink some hot honey lemon tea. Maybe coming down with something but hopefully not. Rest up after school and take care. I will. Um I do uh have that problem where I work in a school with lots and lots of people which means that there's lots of stuff going around all the time. I think if I didn't work at a school, I would just get sick a lot less. Um let's see here. Last question and we'll wrap this up. Nastaran, hello dear Bob. Thanks for your time and spending for us. What does chill out mean? It means you want someone to kill uh to calm down. So, if someone was really angry, I could say, whoa, chill out. Just relax. Take it easy. It's not that big of a deal. Uh let's see here. Let's wrap this up. That's another phrasal verb that I was gonna teach this week and I didn't. I think Freddie Wolf mentioned it last week but anyways, thanks for watching. I'm gonna wrap this up quick and head off to work. Remember, this will come out in a shorter version in a couple days. You should watch that or at least listen to it. It's a good idea. Anyways, thanks for hanging out. Uh have a good day. I will uh see you Tuesday with a new lesson and I'm gonna go to work and I'm gonna enjoy